Hello, this is the Digital Loop, Season 3, Episode 19. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Paul. Great to see you and great to be back here. Uh, I miss our Digital Loop meeting, so, so I'm very glad that we have the opportunity to chat again yeah, and uh, with actually, our audience. Some interesting stuff. Oh, share, share. You actually mentioned the right term. Uh, it's the second episode in a row. We're going to be a bit negative. Should we say no? We're actually not going to be negative, but it's true. We revisited social media in our previous episode. And this time, we want to revisit another topic that uh, took us, I mean, that we speak about a lot, and we, especially in the first two seasons, uh, the sharing economy. So I'll let you introduce the topic, Ivan. Yeah, actually, that's a very good point. On our first season, we had uh, the one and only Jeremiah Oyang, our friend, talking about uh, about the sharing economy when he was uh, at the concept at the web in London, if I remember well. Um, yes, today we're going to talk about the sharing economy. Uh, there was a very interesting article that published in uh, Fast Company uh, entitled, The Sharing Economy is Dead, and We Killed It. Uh, this is an article by Sarah Kessler, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, in Fast Company. That actually was a very interesting read. Uh, as soon as I started reading it, I was afraid that this was a typical you know, clickbait. Yeah, clickbait uh, article. Clickbait, yes. yeah. Type of article that, you know, it's, it's it has a very scandalous uh, type of title, and then you click on it, and it's just, you know, most of uh, But actually, it had a very, some interesting, interesting arguments that, that I thought that will be interesting to have here a discussion about it. Um, basically, what she talks about is the fact that the concept, the idea about the sharing economy, uh, it was a very romantic idea that at the beginning was very popular. And it was based on the concept of actually sharing, right? You know, talk about uh, how back in, I don't know, 2010, people were talking about uh, what you don't need a, a drill. Uh, buy a very expensive drill that you're going to use once or twice better, you know, share that drill with somebody else, you know, make the hole that you need and then you give it back. And then that drill is being used by many, many people, which is better for the environment, is better for everybody and it's cheaper and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, the concept was really nice. A lot of companies came out out of this idea. Companies like uh, Neighbor Goods and Snap Goods in 2009, 2010. And what happened that a lot of companies started to go on this, on this path. And the argument is was that on paper, it's a fantastic idea. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, you and I, we have been to many events and many conferences. When you hear to people talking about the, the sharing economy as, you know, the solution, as the, the best thing, uh, you know, since sliced bread. And uh, a lot of these companies start to fail. A lot of these companies, um, you know, went out of business. And I, I think in the article, it's a very cool quote uh, from Adam Burke, the founder of Neighbor, uh, Nick, Nick Borrow. That basically what he says is that everything makes sense except nobody gives a shit. Uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, they, 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 these people go and buy a drill uh, 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 or they just, you know, bang a screwdriver through the wall. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, people are going to continue to buy these things uh, regardless of how idealistic the concept is. So, um, what do you think about this? What do you think about this fact that, you know, on, on paper, this is a brilliant idea that at the end of the day, people, the apathy of people is actually having an impact on this concept to actually develop? I, I would say first, it's a, probably the, the entire discussion is based on a, on a misunderstanding. It's probably a misnomer to call it the sharing economy. Actually, Jeremiah, whom you just mentioned, called it a collaborative economy. And also dates back to there was a TED talk by Rachel Boatsman, who, whose the title was something like the case for the collaborative consumption. And I think it's slightly different. In the idea of sharing, we have this idea of we all share, like you said, tools, but basically we share our resources amongst people because we do not need these resources at all time ourselves. Uh, the example that a lot of people use is a car. You have a car and 90% of the time it sits in a parking on the road. So this is a resource that is underutilized and you can just share these resources with others to actually optimize, to optimize your, the, the said resource. So I think in that sense, it makes sense. The problem with sharing, uh, the term sharing economy, uh, it will, if, I don't know if you remember, for example, uh, I think it was crouch, couch surfing. Uh, so couch surfing was a thing where you could actually simply 
uh, go to other people's houses and sleep on their couch when you were traveling. There was actually no monetary exchange done. Uh, I think it's still the case, but I haven't looked in a, in a very long time. And that was, I mean, the, the idea of sharing. I mean, you just invite people, you create a community feel. What we ended up with uh, nowadays and what we kind of talk as a sharing economy is not a sharing economy, it is the on-demand economy. When you have an app and you can order an Uber, a, then a car and a chauffeur, that's not actually a sharing economy. It's just an on-demand using services. It's just the economy that already exists that is becoming more efficient, allowing to use resources uh, in a more efficient manner. This has nothing to do with sharing. Even our Airbnbs, Airbnb is an edge case because Airbnb on one side, you Ivan, can uh, give your uh, one, I mean, a room in your in your house to somebody who wants to travel, uh, which could be said is part of a, 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 a part of a sharing economy. There's a monetary exchange for it, but if you look at actually what is happening right now, there's a lot of professional services that have been created around uh, behind Airbnb. So people, I could. Nobody prevents me from renting, uh, so I'm afraid for buying uh, six houses next to where I live and starting renting them out on Airbnb and, and I become some kind of a hotelier in a certain sense. And I've met actually a lot of companies who do that. I also met a lot of startups and companies who actually help with inventory. So they help uh, business and management facilities. They help you, I mean, let's say you even have uh, uh, three houses uh, that are empty in Warsaw. Uh, but you don't want to deal with the paint to actually go and put them yourself on 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 Airbnb and take the pictures and everything. So you have you have, you have companies that help you actually management services like they help for real estate uh, and for offices. They they come and help you actually manage them and put the inventory on Airbnb. So in that sense, I think we have the problem with the term sharing economy is that we're conflating two things. We're conflating what is actually sharing, like you you mentioned the example. You have a power drill and you want to change it. Uh, and you want to other people allow other people to use it with everything else, which is the on-demand economy. And the most of the news and the most of the funding and the most of the coverage that we've heard is about the on-demand economies, Uber, the Airbnbs, these types of, of, of economies. So I would I would actually say that if we had kept the name that uh, I mean we, not you and me, Ivan, but if the industry had kept the name collaborative economy, it might have made more sense. And that part could have, but the sharing economy was almost never there. It doesn't mean, and then I'll let you, because I know I'm rambling as always, it doesn't mean it will never exist. I still believe there's a case for people using resources from their neighborhood, for instance. But I think it's really, and I mentioned the term is neighborhood and community. You're, the article that you shared with me that I hadn't read before is very interesting because it says, I'm not going to drive 20 kilometers to find a power drill that I could just buy for, because it's very cheap at power drill. I'm not, maybe not the professional ones that the builders next door are using, and I'm sorry if you guys hear some noise while we're recording because the house next door is being rebuilt. But I, there's no incentive for me to actually go and visit you, Ivan, to, to take your power drill if I can buy one for $30 at a mega store and then have it, even if I'm not going to use it. I have a power drill. I use it maybe, what, 10 times a year? But there's no incentive for me to use a marketplace for that. So I, I think I think the article is correct, but at the same point, at the same time, you might not use the right example. I think there are still cases where people would exchange goods and services, don't you? Totally agree. And I think that you you nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it right on the on the head. The fact that this is uh, uh, you know at, at the end of the day that the words that we choose to use are really really important uh sharing yes it has this romantic element that we talk about but also collaborative is a little bit different uh in one of my presentations recently i talk about the difference between cooperation and collaboration and a lot of people use that words uh, as if it's exactly the same thing and i think that's not right cooperation is about you know agreement we agree what is our task, what, what is it your job, and you do your job, I do my job, and then let's see what happens. Collaboration is about, you know, we together create something together. So I totally agree with you that that the term is it's, it's, it's probably the root of the problem. Now, when we're talking about, uh, about as you mentioned, the on-demand economy, that is when you can have this uh, agreement between uh, uh, the person providing a service or a good and the person that needs that good. Uh, one of the arguments that they have here is a fact exactly what you mentioned that that you know we use the term sharing, we are using sharing, uh, and at the end you end up having like Kickstarter 
where you share a, a similar funding goal or, or group on where you are sharing uh, the action of tipping for a good deal. When at the end of the day, it's not about sharing, but it's actually it's about you know trying to get something for you and for that you yeah, need it's, somebody it's else. An invest in that case, in the case of Kickstarter, I think crowdfunding is correct, but it's crowdfunding. It's an investment you do. Some people even call it donation. I'm not sure it is, but it's an investment you do in a project you believe, and that's it. I mean, and it's a. a is use of your resources in that case your money to do something instead of laying it in the bank or buying another latte you decide to put it to to buy i don't know a, a carry on that has a battery and gps on it. i don't know whichever so it's i i, I think it's fine it's just like the, the shit that i'm sharing makes it a bit like I, I think you use it like this kind of like very nicey bubbly thing that you know and it's not exactly sharing and but it doesn't mean by the way that collaboration or crowdfunding or crowdsourcing are bad no they actually it's fine to make money it's fine for someone to decide to uh, be a driver for uber uh and you're a professional driver but instead of being linked to a company that has many drivers and many cars linked to uber fine uh there is though because i, I wanted to, to correct myself because i mentioned uber uber of course has also uber pop which is the, the um, driving so you ivan could uh, go to work every day with your car and you could simply decide to have other people in your car with you and uh, make them pay for that service. That's closer to something of the idea of sharing but, or collaborative consumption because you are using your resources not in, the, in its full capacity because you have four other seats, uh, sorry, three or four other seats in your car and you might want uh, to get paid for that. In that sense, yes. But the all the rest, especially UberX, which is basically people, it's different. It's a job. It's not really sharing something you have. It's actually deciding to have another it's a different kind of uh, of job of occupation. Yeah, it's an in you 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 become an independent contractor. It is actually providing a services, taking you from point A to point B. Uh, so so yeah, I mean I mean I think that. Uh, you know, wrapping up this discussion about this, I guess, I guess that again, uh, especially when we're talking about business or about new opportunities that we see uh, in the article, it was mentioned about the fact that some of these companies that were launched, uh, a lot of people made the mistake that you know they 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 went around, they ask they they ask their friends, they ask for feedback, and of course the idea sounds great, and everybody was like, yes, this is a great idea, you should do it, and then these uh, startups they will pop up and they will work really hard on building these platforms and they will, they will launch them and then there were very slow adoption because very often the people that for them the, it, it doesn't make any sense to, as you mentioned to drive you know half an hour to go to a place to pick up a, a drill to come back then pay I don't know $15 for it come back make the whole come back bring it back when they can just order from Amazon the drill that is just for $20 <laughs> right and, and 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 this is what we need to understand. We need really to understand what are the needs of our our potential users, and and avoid just getting uh, caught by the hype. And, and I, I would mean, say I'm sorry to interrupt. I would say not only the need, but also what simply what user would be ready to pay for. Because you want to create a business, you want to have. Uh, so I, it needs the idea that I could go in all my neighborhood and take the drills of other people. To use your example. But would I be ready to pay for it? And so if somebody provides me a marketplace to do that, the marketplace would only be able to survive if somebody pays for it. Uh, once our funding is gone, if you have venture capital funding, if no one is ready to pay for that service, it simply does. But it doesn't mean that these services cannot actually exist. Maybe there are some cases where they will survive. Maybe not for power drills. So maybe for power drills, at some point, somebody will actually find a solution for it. I don't know. I'm just It's just that I don't think the article was like you uh, you said at the very introduction of this show you said it was a bit link baity i believe it still is because it doesn't mean that everything is dead and the entire and we kill the, the the sharing economy no we just were too enthusiastic about what the sharing economy could be and we believe that every single thing could be, become a marketplace and maybe the market is actually not ready to have everything in a marketplace and some stuff will survive and some of these companies will thrive some other will simply disappear and people are not ready to change their habits of consumption because that's maybe also the, the other case is that we can have like you said a drill on amazon by the way amazon just launched a service to uh so they will also use independent contractors for uh for delivery so instead of using you know the usual parcels delivery systems that are either the you know the post and all the dhl ups etc they will they also launch a service for independent contractors 
Funnily enough, a lot of people yesterday, uh, two days, three days ago, when it was launched, used the term, oh, the sharing economy. No, it's not. It's actually simply, you know, simply, it's a big operation to set it up, but it's independent contractors. is me running to with, with parcels to other people, and that's fine. Just don't call it the sharing economy. Yeah, I like the way you said the on-demand economy. You should write a book about it and, and become a best-selling author. Just right. take away sharing and put uh, on-demand economy. Very, very, very good stuff. Um, is there anything you would like to add uh, connected with this with this subject or connected with how, you know, for, for because one of the things that I wanted to mention, I, I, I've been to a couple uh, demo days uh, and, and I had the opportunity to talk with a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, startups and a lot of entrepreneurs that are, um, you know, they get an idea, they get excited about it, they jump at it, and uh, six months later they are out of money and, and, and figuring out what to do next because they make these type of mistakes that were mentioned in the, in the, in the, in the article of you know, getting an idea that they think is great, and making the assumption that this is exactly what people need and what people want, and, uh, and then jumping into, into conclusions that you know, without the proper research, without the proper understanding about the marketplace, about the market needs, about the users, about the consumer journey, um, it's a recipe for disasters. Uh, I, I would say it's like, you know, like when a Coke introduced new Coke, uh, they made all the research they wanted, everybody says, yeah, it's better, because it's a difference between what you say you think it's better, what you th say you will do, and it's actually different what you actually do and what you actually buy, and I think, the examples here are most people think, oh yes, it's a cool idea, we'll do it, and then they don't because there's a lot of inertia and behaviors and there's not incentives to actually, uh, I mean, again, if I were, if somebody would say, you know, Paul, uh, you're going to get paid to do 20 miles to get that power drill, I was like, mm, okay, I'm going to do that instead of, you know, because suddenly there's an incentive. There's, if there's no incentives, the market is limited. So I would say to startups like that is that, uh, do some market research you don't have, uh, but look, market research is limited because again, Coke did market research and introduced a new Coke that was a disaster. But uh, do mean go beyond your group of friends, beyond your parents, beyond people that say, yes, yeah, cool idea. Everybody thinks it's a cool idea, but actually realize, think about what pe what actual behaviors are. It's very hard to change the behaviors of people. I think this is the hardest thing to do. Very, very few companies can actually change the, the, the behavior. I think you have to build on existing behaviors that are already there and say, oh, we're gonna make that behavior simpler, frictionless, easier, cheaper, and that might work. If you have to add a new set of behavior to an existing behavior, it's very rare that it, that, that, that it, that it works. That's what I believe, actually. Yeah, absolutely, totally agree. Um, all right, so I guess I guess uh, this is it for today. Um, if you want to share uh, our our uh, <laughs> episode, we invite you to to to. Uh, if you like what you're watching, if you like what you're listening to, you know you can you can find us at the digitalloop.co. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Uh, share the episode with your friends. Uh, uh, we we love uh, hearing of people that uh, you know. Last week I found a play. Uh, somebody came to me and say, "Hey, I, I listened to your post. It's really good. My 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 friend recommended it." And uh, you know we're talking about sharing and and, and spreading the word. So. I also, again, if you have any questions or any comments, we love to hear from you. Uh, you, you can just uh, put a comment on, on Twitter, on Facebook. And if you have any suggestions about, you know, potential guests that you would like us to talk or topics that you would like us to talk about, uh, also just drop us a line and, and we'll be very happy to talk about it. I, and I also want to finish by thanking, and you're going to say the name because I'm not able to say because it's a Polish name. We, you and me, were invited in a podcast uh, to talk about podcasting yeah. and other topics that we talk about in this show uh, by Richard Lucas, uh, like it was a few weeks ago. The podcast is actually live. I'm going to let you say the name of it because I'm impossible, it's impossible for me. And I'll, I'll put as well the the show, the sorry, the link and the uh, the actual audio in the show notes of uh, this episode. Can you say the name, please? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a very good point. That actually it's good for our our audience if they want to check out a really cool new podcast called Project Casimir. Casimir, uh, that's in Polish. Kasimierz. Yeah, Project, Project <laughs> Casimir. Uh, it's an it's a brand new podcast uh, uh, developed in the city of Krakow in Poland, and they are exp they, they are looking at the uh, uh, at the innovation and how business can grow and how this uh, uh, 
uh, region in Central Eastern Europe is having a huge, huge uh, impact uh, across the Central Eastern European region. So they have really interesting interviews uh, with with the founders and entrepreneurs and experts in the industry. And uh, they were kind enough, enough to invite us to be uh, their guests. And we had the opportunity to talk a lot about podcasting, about developing interesting content uh, and, and about developing your platform thanks to fantastic uh, tools such as you know podcasting and soundcloud and google hangouts and so on and so on so project casimir uh we're gonna have the link uh, in our show notes and uh, check it out and um, if you like it just just say hi to to the project casimir guys from us and on that uh see you next week Ivan. see you next week have a great time everybody take care